obviously wanted to be alone, but I wanted to help her and fix whatever was bothering her. Or help. <coughs> I couldn't leave it like this. I quietly stepped into the room and closed the door, making Naomi flinch and freeze up. Naomi. Naomi gasped before turning to me, a shocked expression on her face. Tears had painted her cheeks, which made my heart sink in my chest. Naomi, what's wrong? Uh, it's nothing. Nothing. I... Naomi quickly rubbed her eyes and face, trying to cover her face and clean it off sadness. I pressed my lips together, not believing her. Naomi, talk to me. You're acting strange in history. I was just listening to the lecture. You're scribbling in your notebook, just like Susie. I was watching almost the entire class period. I have bad handwriting. No, she didn't. She had the most precise and elegant handwriting I had ever seen. Why was she lying to me? What was going on? What was making her so distraught? Naomi, whatever is troubling you, let me help you. You can't help me, okay? Just like Susie. I stepped back, feeling the sudden anger in her voice. She covered her mouth, regretting what came out of it, and stared almost in pure fright at me. Naomi. I stepped towards her, not wanting to scare her, but wanting to be closer. Naomi didn't seem affected, so I continued to walk towards her. Eventually, we were only a desk away from each other. Tell me. Naomi stared before, letting out a shuddering sigh, nodding, nodding in defeat. I slowly took a seat in the desk in front of me, watching as she moved to stand in front of it. I've been having some issues, okay? Issues? What about? Well, I mean... Is someone bothering you? In a way. Is someone bullying you? No. Does someone have a crush on you? Well, actually... Oh my god. When is the last horse going to leave the gates here? You have a crush on someone? Yeah, yes. Who the hell could it be? I don't know how to handle it. I mean, I used to believe I liked only guys, but all of a sudden I had these feelings. So I went to Kay, but she only listened and told me to just go along with it. But I don't know how to, I mean... You have a crush on a girl? That's not bad, is it? I'm the one who always wanted to talk about guys. No way. You can like whoever you want to like. But what if I liked someone who was really close to me? My mind instantly went to Suze. Oh, for fuck's sake, really. Did, did Naomi like her? There was no way. Jeez, who, who does that... Um, leave it in that case. I mean, really. Anyway, then again, maybe Suze's rebellious personality interested Naomi enough to like her after all these years. It wouldn't be impossible. Yet, I somehow felt a little jealous. Naomi liked Suzu. How could that be? I had to stop. This wasn't helping, Naomi. I needed to help her feel better beyond anything else. So what? If you like someone close to you, that makes the feeling that much more powerful. Who knows? Maybe she likes you back. Naomi stared at me with a look I almost couldn't understand. It seemed strange, but it was almost nothing. What if the person I like is you? Finally. Didn't see that coming. I felt like I was dreaming. What? What? She liked me. Huh? When? How? Naomi looked down at the desk, her, te her, her face turning red. I've liked you for a while now. I mean, well, I've liked you since last year. I was really not sure about how I felt though until last semester when I started seeing Kay. Actually, what time of year is it meant to be anyway at this point? She told me that what I was feeling was normal, even though I kind of thought I'd always go for men. I mean, not that I have anything against people who aren't straight, but like... Naomi whimpered as she fumbled over her words. I found it adorable, but I couldn't help but stare in surprise at her. She liked me? After all these signals? Gently, Naomi took one of my hands and brought it to her lips, closing her eyes to breathe before looking back at me. I like you. I really do. Okay? I felt my heart flutter and flattery. Naomi, one of my best friends, liked me. I wasn't sure what to say. 
Naomi's face was almost as dread as a tomato, but she continued to hold my hand, wanting me to say something. She was a patient woman. I bet she was. I guess the confession really got to her, oh, sorry, really got her nerves out because now she was calm and seemed relaxed. What could I say to her, though? This was a huge deal for both her and me. She had been one of my best friends for the majority of my life, and here she was, confessing to having a crush on me. It was surreal, yet, me, yet it made me feel both strange and fluffy. Nomi smiled and gently lowered my hand. I watched as she let out a relaxed sigh. I feel so much better after saying that. Thank you. Couldn't help but stare at... What? Okay, couldn't help but stare at Nomi longer. Was she not expecting me to say anything in return? Just say something, Jesus. Or do something. Anyway, a sentence bubbled in my stomach, forcing itself out of my mouth without filter. Uh, let's see. Go out of there, why not? I did not know what came over me. I let it spill out. I liked her though, I liked her a lot. She was adorable and cute in her own special way. I loved that she was an individual and stayed true to herself no matter what Suzu or I did. Sure, she was a little ditzy, but that added to the charm. <clears throat> Naomi stared wide-eyed at me, blushing as red as could be. I was positive that, if she blushed any more, she would faint from all the blood rushing into her cheeks to colour them that red. Did, did you just... Yep, sure did. Yes, I did. I stood and gently took Naomi's hand. I needed her to know how I felt. She poured her feelings out to me. It was more than fair to share mine with her. I really like you too. You're adorable and I love that about you. You're kind and sophisticated and you have this sort of charm. Naomi, will you go out with me? Naomi was completely red in the face, but her eyes started to water. Rogue tears dripped from the edges of her eyes as she smiled at me. It's almost like a marriage proposal. <laughs> anyway, Nomi rushed around the desk, separating us, and hugged me tightly. I held her to me and smiled. Felt a small part of my heart fill with pure joy. Felt happy, like nothing was going to stand in my way, with Nomi to help me. All sort of people. Months went by since Nomi's confession. We were happy, and eventually graduation came along. The rest of the story could be, or rather, could almost be passed over. I graduated from school as one of the top ten students of my class. My family was proud, even my dad. Maybe it was because I did my best, maybe it was because I was finally a woman. Uh, yeah, here we go, this is new. Naomi, my girlfriend, went to culinary school right after school, learning the basics of cooking and business. Her, study, her, her desire to make a cafe was astounding, and soon she was ranking as top of her classes within the first few weeks. <coughs> Kay offered Naomi a job at the Pink Lady Cafe, letting her serve with Lily as a supervisor. Naomi instantly accepted and worked with Lily to bring customers in the town the best coffee and treats ever made. But what of my future? Well, with Nomi's support, I finally decided to stand up for myself. After I graduated, Andrew and I presented our cases, and the board decided to have Andrew step in. Can we actually ever become CEO ourselves? I don't think so. Or maybe um, the way that we talk to the Andrew guy, maybe that influences things a bit. Anyway, my father was beyond <clears throat> my father was beyond shocked. Congratulated Andrew, went to the University of Chicago to get a degree, while Andrew dedicated himself full time to the company. Andrew vowed to respect the wishes, blah, blah, okay, no skipping. All right, vowed to respect the wishes of the late CEO, even grander company, large amount of heart. We've been proud, I'm pretty sure we've seen this part, though. And let's see, no choice, let me decide my future. Okay, I'll choose my life. I want to venture off on my own. Naomi reassured me that she would support me and help me through whatever I decided to do. I was grateful and would never forget that promise. I was happy and nothing could shake me down from that happiness. Until... One morning I woke up and took in all that had happened, as if it were all a dream. My life seemed to fall perfectly into place. It was almost surreal. Is everything as you wanted, sweetie? Sure is. I sharply turned my head to see a woman, dressed in a golden black gown, staring at me with unnatural red eyes. For some reason I felt as if she was familiar. I just couldn't place my finger on it. Okay, twirl around a pencil. Who are you? Yes. What is he saying yes to? 
It's <laughs> been a while since I got a message from him, but anyway. There's no need to worry about who I am. I just wanted to make sure you got what you desired. I didn't want to just leave you empty-handed. What I desired? Okay. Couldn't pin down why. I'm pretty sure you have seen this. See, I've had a sheep appear. Oh, need I to leave. I just wanted a small pin. Chasing around. Yep. Would you mind if I steal a little kiss for the road? It'll be a Okay, yep, she already had that happen. Okay, and she depletes us of our energy. Okay. Lovely. Now, this is the last time you'll see me. I hope you and your sweet Naomi have a wonderful life together. And so we shall. The woman placed the purple pencil into the cleavage of a dress and began to leave the room. I was too stunned to move, but I watched as the woman opened my balcony window, floated up, and dropped from the balcony. And thus, yes. my price oh. is paid. Indeed, as they do. <laughs> I heard a voice echo in my mind before I heard the snapping of a pencil breaking my thoughts. What was I thinking about? Oh yes, my life. I let my mind wander to my future before my phone started ringing. I instantly picked it up. Hello. Hey, can I come over? Yeah, sure. What's up? I just need to talk to you. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. I grew worried. What was wrong? Did something happen? My mind began to sort through the possibilities that could have occurred with Naomi. Soon enough, I heard Naomi's car pull up to the gate. I rushed to the front doors and opened them to see Naomi looking at me with a gigantic, happy smile. Guess what happened? She got a pet alligator. Wait to guess. What? Wait, guess what? Just guess. <laughs> alright, alright. Hmm. Did you get transferred up a level in a class? Nope. Alright, did you win something? In a way. Pet alligator, I knew it. Out oh, never mind. Before I knew it, Nomi was holding up a ticket that had the word Paris printed across it in bold letters. Guess who's going to Paris for summer before sophomore year? Paris? Oh wow, that's awesome. I smiled, seeing how happy Naomi was. She and I both knew that France was a great place to learn about cafes, second only to Italy. However, I felt my heart grow heavy. She was going to Paris. The date across the top noted that the trip was in three days and it would last the entire summer. She and I had talked about going together as kind of, a, kind of an international date of sorts. She was going to go alone. Huh? I know that look on your face. What's wrong? We'll be in a long distance distance relationship. We'll probably could have some fun with Susan then, eh? Anyway, Naomi stared at me blankly before looking to her hands. She then started to giggle before laughing almost hysterically. Huh? What's so funny? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't show you. Naomi gently moved her fingers, revealing a second ticket behind us. Ah, oh, that's a tease. I gasped and stared as she smiled widely at me. Go. I felt my heart lift from its heavy feeling as I stared at the second ticket. I quickly rushed at Naomi and hugged her, kissing her. She was shocked, but as I felt her relax in my arms, she kissed me back. I didn't want to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this woman in my arms. There were no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high all at once. Here I was, holding the woman I wanted to be with like nothing else mattered. I vowed, vowed, I vowed to cherish her and love her for the remainder of my days and beyond the groove. And that was my happily ever after. And Naomi's love, O. Oh. What the hell's O oh meant to me? Oh, and we've actually got the... Uh, and, uh, and end music as well. Interesting. But we, I don't think we got it for uh, Suzu though. Strange. Or maybe we did it and I just forgot, just skipped us without uh, um, noticing. Interesting. <clears throat> well, I suppose we did it in the end, didn't we? Yeah, whatever. Ah, it's really watched that. So there we go, Naomi's love. Oh, how sweet. Well then, I think that leaves us with... 
Now let's see. That, that. Actually, well, why did I save here? Oh, right, right. Let it give face, stay in my room. Actually, have we done this before? Oh, yes. Entertain myself. Oh, okay, actually, do we have a whole different thing to do there? Alright, so we'll go through that actually, because there's probably going to be. Uh, okay, fine. There's probably going to be a whole bunch of different um, paths to take from that, so. Yeah, let's see. So, left with the choice of Diana. Maybe we'll see if we can bargain with her, perhaps. So, fire to make a deal with Diana. But then I remembered demons had a conscience. They went heartless without reason. She could be reasoned with. She seems like a businesswoman. Wait. What? You're wasting my time. What about a deal, huh? <clears throat> Diana raised an eyebrow. I was afraid she wasn't one to listen. What if she was as ruthless as I imagined her to be? I'm listening. Wait, really? Was she really willing to listen to me? She didn't drop me in a, the pit of death, but she didn't let me out of her spell. Now was as good a time as any to try reason. These memories are precious to me, but they're not worth me losing my life. Of course. I mean, if I die, people will wonder and try to find explanations to why I died or where I disappeared to. Then just hand over your memories. What if I traded them to you instead? You seem like a reasonable businesswoman. A trade is better than forcing me to give in, right? Hmm. This was insane. I didn't even know if she was willing to listen. She already had me hanging over a pit of death. The only thing I could hope for was her being forgiving enough to listen to reason. Well, speak your terms. What do you want in exchange? I let out a relieved sigh. She was willing to listen further. Well, what can you give me in return for them? I'm a demon. I can give you anything within reason. Money, men, women, power. Name it. Just make it worth the price. She could really get me anything? My mind began to wonder. What did what did I want? Her power. Oh, I actually got a decision here. I'll be damned. The plot thickens. Alright, well there we go. Let's give us a shot. You sure? Yep. <clears throat> uh, we'll go with her actually for starters. I heard Diana stifle, stifle a laugh. Me? Are you serious? What do you mean, me? I looked to Diana again. She was indeed scary, but she was gorgeous and somehow she interested me. Just like that, more so than the boys. I mean, you're staying with me for a little while. I want to get to know you and these rules you're talking about. A human wanting to know more about a demon than the rules. You're really trying to step over your place. Especially if you'll be losing those memories in the end. I'm serious. I'll give you my memories and energy if you stay just for a couple of days. A day even. It'll be worth it. Completely willingly? Completely willingly. And if you don't fulfill your end of the bargain? Then you can feed me to your pit beast. Did that really slip out of my mouth? Was I really wanting to put my life back on the line again? Why not? If it meant keeping my memories for a little longer, then yes. Oh, wait a minute. Something tells me we could probably change things quite a bit, actually, if we went into uh, the grandfather's office and uh, learned about magic, actually. Oh, well. Dinah looked to me, scanning my body with her eyes for any signs of false intent. I didn't have any, so Dinah sighed and snapped her fingers again. The demon below me vanished, and I was slowly lowered to the ground. I looked to Dinah in surprise. You are very lucky demon magic is so finicky. What do you mean? Why do you think demons make deals with humans like you? I wasn't sure. Demons were still new to me. I had heard stories of people making deals with demons and only ruin coming from it. Yeah, I'm sure this will be quite... turn out quite good though. Anyway, Dinah's side. It's one thing to take your memories or your energy. It's another for you to willingly give it. We get more for our effort if the one we make a deal with is willing. Think of it like sex. If I'm aroused and you're willing to open your legs for me, I'll get pleasure. I'll enjoy it, you might enjoy it, and it's done. But if you aren't willing and I force myself on you anyway, it's not so pleasurable for me. Even if I get what I want, it won't be as worth the effort. An interesting comparison. Strangely, that made sense. It was very much like a business. If I had what they want... They could negotiate for it, or they could take it away anyway, but not without a fight. Were they all really business-oriented? 
Huh. Maybe they're running the central bank, say. Eh? Anyway, my curiosity about demons grew as I realised what deal I'd made. So you'll stay for a couple of days? A day is enough. Oh, is it now? Yeah, sure, fine. Yeah, sure, fine. Yes. Yes. Diana looked at me up and down once again. I felt a little naked all of a sudden under her gaze, but I ignored it as she, sh as she shrugged. All right. Diana kept her eyes on me, unsure what I was going on. Oh, sorry, unsure what was going on from the look on her face. So, what do you want to know? You're obviously curious about demons enough to make a deal with me. My first thought shot to her, but then I remembered the boys. Not all my questions were answered, and I wanted to know everything. First of all, who exactly are you? Diana chuckled before crossing her arms. You may refer to me as simply Diana. As I said before, I'm a succubus, and I intend to bring the boys back home. Back home? What do you mean? Back to the demon world? Precisely. They don't belong here, and it's imperative that they return. Why? Did they not tell you? They're runaway royals. <laughs> of course they would be. I couldn't believe my ears. What? They were royalty? Why would they run away from royalty? Diana simply smirked at my new surprised face. Ah, so they didn't tell you. How unfortunate. You were in the presence of a demon prince and his noble brothers and you didn't even know. Hmm, interesting. They were so willing to uh, make breakfast and all that. Now oh, there you go. I felt myself unconsciously walk over and sit on my bed. They hid something gigantic from me. Why? Did they not trust me? Then again, it had only been a couple of days. Yet they helped me and were here for me regardless, acting like servants instead of noblemen. I gripped my head in frustration. What am I supposed to believe? Believe whatever you wish. The confusion will fade away soon enough regardless. I looked to Diana, who only gave me an almost somber look in return. She was serious about removing my memories, but she would keep her end of the deal until I learned all I could. Keep her end of the deal until I learned all I could, yes. That and I felt thrilled to have her. Maybe it was because she was a succubus, I didn't know. I sighed and faced Diana. So how did you get to the human world? How did the boys get here? With the help of a human, in both of our cases. There's truly no need for details beyond that. Any human can cast a demon's summoning spell. It's just a matter of what happens during the summoning and after where things get tricky. What do you mean? Well, if a human is willing, only part of their life force is taken from them, and they are given one chance to open a bridge between our worlds to allow the demon they desire to come through. The more demons come through, the more life force the spell takes. Ah, that's right. I think that's the spell that's, uh... Grandfather the cast, actually. Luckily for the poor human that brought them here, the boy sacrificed some of their own powers to open the bridge instead of letting the spell feed solely on the human. The human lived, and the boys came through. Wait a minute, that wasn't the grandfather? I don't know, it must have been, but he must have died shortly after that. That almost made sense. Something in my mind clicked, but I couldn't clear it out to figure out what it was. I only nodded to Diana. And you are the same. Somewhat. However, I don't care to go into details about how I came here. You'll forget soon enough. That's not part of the deal. You wish to have me around for more information. I get to decide what information to give. Cheater. It's not cheating if it's not a broken rule. <laughs> I huffed and crossed my arms and legs. Diana was a game player and I didn't like her rules. However, they were the rules I had to accept in order to keep my memories a little while longer. I'd find a way to remember she wasn't going to win. Well, if we knew about that magic stuff from uh, Grandpa's study, then we might actually be able to remember. Now, yeah, well. Diana let out a small chuckle and ran a hand through her hair. Mm, well, I believe I should head to bed. If I'm to stay here, then I need some form of sleep. Is that so? I watched as Diana crossed through my room to the door and opened it. She turned to me with a small wink. Have a good night. See you in the morning. Okay, then. Before I could respond, she exited my room and closed the door behind her. I stared. It was like she was in control. I almost gritted my 
teeth at the thought. She wasn't the master of the house. I was. I huffed and crawled back under the covers. How did my life get so complicated? What was going on with me? I must have had serious bad luck. Sighed and covered myself with my blankets, wanting tonight to end. I needed tomorrow to come. Sm sc school would take my mind off of things. If school actually happens, anyway. I woke that morning minutes before my alarm. I felt slightly groggy, but I didn't exactly feel bad. It was more of a physical exhaustion with a mind ready to take on the day. I stretched and quickly changed into my clothes before, before heading downstairs with my bag. As I reached the lobby, I stopped and sniffed the sudden new smell in the air. Breakfast? I continued my way to the dining room to see Dinah laying at a plate covered with sliced fruit. On the table there were delicious smelling eggs, toast, bacon, ham, veggies, and juice. I felt my mouth salivate. But then I remembered that it was Diana serving breakfast, and I shook my head. What are you doing? Ah, you're up. Come. Breakfast. I didn't know what you liked, so I made everything I knew humans ate for this time of day. What the hell does she eat? They're just life force of people? Anyway, I walked over and scanned the table before giggling. Diana raised an eyebrow at me. And what is so funny? You didn't make everything breakfast related. You forgot a couple of things. Like what? Coffee, pancakes, waffles. Diana looked almost insulted before looking to the table and recounting the plates. I laughed harder, making a glare at me. I haven't been in the human world long enough to know everything, alright? Unlike the boys, I know little to nothing about what you humans eat in your homes. At the mention of the boys, I suddenly remembered them. They treated me like part of their family, caring for me and making sure I was okay beyond anything else. They were servants to me and I let them go. I let out a sigh at the memory. Little did I know that Dinah stared at me the entire time. I shook my head and looked at the table, getting an empty plate and filling it with what I wanted before sitting and eating. Dinah remained, remained standing, watching me. I felt almost naked under her gaze, so I looked over at her, pausing my eating. Aren't you going to eat? I already ate. What did you eat? You really wish to know. Yes, yes, come on. Yes. I wanted to know more about demons. I wanted to know more about her. Of course, I said yes. Diana stared in surprise at me before smirking a bit and reaching into her cleavage. Apparently can stuff all sorts of things in there. I, uh, I watched as she pulled out a small purple vial. She popped the cork and poured a meal, a mere couple sipfuls into her palm before recorking the vial and placing it back in her dress. Diana closed her eyes and closed her hand. What was she doing? This was odd to watch, yet at the same time, I was practically at the edge of my seat in curiosity. What was she going to do? Her hand started to open, almost like a blossoming flower, and revealed a small peach-sized fruit. It was purple and had almost an enchanting smell to it that made my food seem almost disgusting. <laughs> and here I thought she was going to pull out the remains of a rabbit or something. The now, there you go. We call it a sweet flower. Would you like to try it? Obviously, yes. I nodded, staring at the fruit. It looked absolutely gorgeous and uh, glorious and delectable. I couldn't resist grabbing onto the chance to try it. Diana nodded before cupping the fruit in both hands and pulling the purple flesh from the fruit, revealing a juicy, blackish center. As if it was cut on the inside, Diana pulled out a perfect slice and handed it to me. I must say, you may be the first human to try this fruit. You should consider yourself lucky. Really? With all the humans and demons, I we'll have to wonder if one can really be the first. There you go. I nodded at not pulling my eyes away from the fruit slice in my hand. It was juicy and its clear juice painted over my fingers. I somehow didn't care. I wanted to try it and savour it. I lifted the small slice to my lips and took a small bite, feeling ecstasy run from my mouth. I almost couldn't fight back the moan that was erupting from my throat. It was sweet, yet it was slightly tart. It was the perfect combination, and at the same time, it felt so unnatural. I felt not only pre pleasure in my mouth, but my body began to feel energised and warm. All of that was from a small bite. I swallowed the bite full and let out a pleasured sigh, making Dinah smirk slightly at me with a raised eyebrow. I couldn't lie to her about how it tasted. 
It's delicious. That it is. They're natively grown in my kingdom, so I have the pleasure of enjoying these every day. You have a kingdom? I do. The boys are not the only royals in the demon world, sweetie. I just so happen to be a princess. Hmm. And yet they've got her doing the uh, the legwork, basically. Right, I stared in surprise. She was really a princess? How? She looked so mature. She was more of a queen than a princess. Really? You're a princess? You seem more like a queen. For a split second, I swore I saw Diana blush, but as she started to laugh, I shook my head of the fort. You flatter me, little girl. You best be careful. I may just take your flattery as an invitation to take your energy. I shut my mouth, feeling a blush run across, across my own cheeks. I returned to eating the fruit, hearing her chuckle and eat the remainder of the fruit on her own. Surprisingly, I felt full just from that small slice. How could that be? The only explanation I had was that it was a demon fruit, so I mentally accepted it as just that. What I didn't expect was Diana leaving, leaning over and lifting my chin to look down at me. Messy, aren't you? I stared as Diana came closer and gently kissed my cheek by the corner of my lip, making me gasp slightly. What was she doing? Why was she kissing my cheek? I was red in the face already, and here she was, taking advantage. Very naughty. Diana pulled away and slightly licked and popped her lips. What? 